I'm Urvi Shah, a hematologist and oncologist at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center, and I'll, I'll be presenting on a high fiber dietary intervention in precursor plasma cell disorders on behalf of my co authors. These are my disclosures. Given early detection as hematologists and oncologists, we have an opportunity for secondary prevention. The precancerous states of MGUS and smoldering myeloma in some patients may progress to cancer. As there is progression, there is prog uh, further genomic alterations and immune dysfunction as the disease progresses. We know that modifiable factors that affect the immune function include diet, obesity, diabetes, and the microbiome. These disorders are very widely prevalent in the US population, and very few patients, individuals in the US get enough dietary fiber. It's less than 5%. We know based on research by us and others that obesity, diabetes, Western inflammatory diets, and impaired microbiome increase risk for myeloma development. So can we tilt the scale and improve these uh, diet and the microbiome and metabolism to reduce risk of myeloma progression? That was the hypothesis of the Nutrivention trial, looking at patients with MGUS and smoldering myeloma with a BMI over 25. 20 patients were enrolled in the single arm, single center study. Um, patients received 12 weeks of a high fiber plant-based diet where meals were provided, a majority of meals, lunch and dinner, 24 weeks of nutrition coaching, and they were followed for one year on the study. The, uh, the patients could eat to satiety. There was no calorie restriction. The primary endpoint was feasibility, mean adherence greater than 70% and BMI reduction over 5% at 12 weeks were the primary endpoint. What we did see was a sustained BMI reduction of about 7% that maintained even at one year. We saw an improvement in dietary adherence of unprocessed plant, uh, uh, plant foods being 20% of uh, kil calories consumed at baseline, increasing to 92%. Even at one year, it was much higher than baseline. Additionally, we saw increase in fiber intake, increase in the healthy eating index score as well. We looked at patient reported outcomes such as quality of life, and we see an improvement in the quality of life, global health status. We asked patients if they had any difficulty following the diet, and uh, of 15 responses, uh, all said very easy or somewhat easy, and nobody said it was difficult. You can also see by the green bars that patients had improvements in multiple self-reported symptoms, such as metabolic markers and feel metabolic uh, conditions, um, depression, anxiety, sleep, energy, and then GI conditions as well. Four participants self-reported being able to stop medications such as insulin, um, bupropion and antidepressant, potassium and hydroxychloroquine, um, saving a median of $65 a month. The trajectory of disease progression slowed in two patients who had clearly rising M spikes, and this is green post-intervention, where you can see that the, the, um, there is a slowing down of the progression of these patients. The rest of the patients had stable disease or low disease burden or limited pre-intervention data to compare to. The intervention reduced insulin resistance. As you can see, fasting insulin levels came down. Adiponectin leptin ratio improved, and LDL cholesterol levels dropped by about 20 points. Um, when we look at muscle volume, too, amongst the patients that lost weight more than 5%, they still maintained muscle mass, and one patient gained muscle, suggesting that despite um, weight loss, there was no muscle loss. We next looked at the microbiome, and you can see that the intervention improved microbiome diversity by two methods, 16S and shotgun sequencing. There was a change in beta diversity, and there was an increase also in butyrate producers and a trend at certain time points. Carbohydrate active enzymes, which are um, look at microbiome function, also changed, suggesting 
an increase in these enzymes that can digest carbohydrates. BMI also inversely correlated with alpha diversity, so higher BMI, lower diversity. Fiber directly correlated with alpha diversity, higher fiber, higher diversity, and higher fiber intake was also directly correlated with butyrate producers. Um, HEI score and adherence correlated as well. Next, we look at the immune system, and you can see that the C-reactive protein in seven patients that was elevated dropped by 50% by end of study. The absolute neutrophil count also reduced at week 12, and there was a change in non-classical monocytes, which are inflammatory monocytes. They reduced, and the anti-inflammatory classical monocytes increased. The intervention reduced um, inflammation, as you can see, also with the cytokines. So in majority of patients, the blue color shows you a reduction in cytokines in the non-inflammatory cluster. The inflammatory cluster had a few patients who had infections, other cancers that led to inflammation or less weight loss. We did single cell RNA sequencing on the bone marrow, looking at paired samples from baseline and one year apart. And we see similar changes to the blood where there's an increase in granulocyte monocyte progenitors an increase in the classical monocytes and a decrease in the non-classical or CD16 monocytes. And on gene set enrichment analysis, there is an increase in signaling via the tumor necrosis factor alpha pathway in the CD14 monocyte suggesting change in function too. Next, we looked at interaction between different immune cells. So to see what's happening in the, when the immune cells can communicate with each other. And what you can see is that at baseline, these myeloid cells um, are uh, interacting with this exhausted cell, as you can see with all the gray lines, which are at baseline, and which majority of them connect to CD8 exhausted. At the end of the study, which are the green lines, majority of them connect to CD8 cytotoxic and NK56 dim. So this suggests enhanced anti-tumor immunity, and we see similar interactions in tumor necrosis factor alpha as well, with CD8 exhausted. Uh, at baseline and CD8 cytotoxic and natural killer cells at end of study. Next, we looked at mouse models in Dr. Matteo Bellone's lab. This is the VK MIC mouse model looking at smoldering myeloma, and these mice eventually will progress to myeloma. Half the mice received a high fiber diet, half the mice received a standard mouse diet. What you can see is that the mice that received the standard diet, all of them had progressed to myeloma by the end of the study at 30 weeks. Whereas in the high fiber diet, almost half of the mice had not progressed at 30 weeks. There was also changes in weight, um, but this was maintained after and the mice didn't keep losing weight. Um, we see similar changes in the microbiome in short chain fatty acid or butyrate producing bacteria. We see an increase in these short chain fatty acids such as acetate and propionate. And we see immune changes where there's a reduction in exhausted MDSCs and um, exhausted CD40 cells as well as MDSCs and an increase in tumor infiltrating or cytotoxic CD8 cells. Lastly, we looked at a high, high fiber diet's effects compared to calorie restriction given a common question is, was it the weight loss or was it the diet? And so in, this is a TVK McMouse model looking at full-blown myeloma. We did the same diet, standard diet versus a high fiber diet. You can see that there's again a difference in weight with the standard versus a high fiber but there's also a difference and a delay in the appearance of the M spike of the disease. Um, and overall survival is different. These mice had received a um, different amount of calorie intake because high fiber diets are satiating. You can see that they took in less calories compared to the standard diet. Therefore, we designed um, a, a diet which is an isocaloric control diet and in this diet, the mice received um, similar calories to the high fiber diet, and the same experiment was performed. 
And what you can see is that there was still a difference in weight despite eating similar amount of calories suggesting fiber still has some effects. Um, and the high fiber diet also delayed appearance of the M spike in mice receiving the high fiber diet compared to a controlled diet with same calories. There was a difference in adipose tissue and uh, colon length as well, suggesting colon length is a marker of microbiome health and gut health. So with that, I um, would like to conclude that a high fiber diet was associated with improvement in BMI, um, improvement in metabolism, so insulin resistance, um, microbiome diversity, and short chain fatty acids such as inflammation, anti-tumor immunity, and um, maybe potentially delayed progression. The Nutrivention 3 trial, which is looking at um, patients with MGUS or smoldering myeloma is enrolling at MSK in New York and Atlanta and Emory. Patients across the country are eligible as long as they are willing to travel to one of these locations five times spread over a year. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if interested. And with that, I'd like to thank my uh, collaborators, Dr. Matteo Bellone for them and Laura Cograsi for the mouse data and uh, experiments, um, Dr. Lisokin, Dr. Iyengar, Dr. Vanden Brink, as well as uh, funders and the patients who took part in these studies, as well as all co-authors who contributed. This was truly team science. Thank you.